Hi, welcome to the small shed. This Saturday I'm looking into the world of photo shoots, magazine articles on our model railway layout. See you in a minute. Now the club O-Gage Railway layout that I've been working on for about 14 years or more now has been invited to an exhibition at the NEC in Birmingham this weekend and I thought I'd just run over uh, some details of what's gone on by way of preparation for that event. <clears throat> We've fortunate in our club in that one of the members is uh, a features writer on one of the three or four magazines that uh, deal with model railways in the UK and I also know Andy York who's the editor and photographer for them and they've come down a couple of months ago now to take some photographs of the layout they're doing a feature on the layout in the magazine this month so it coincides with the exhibition and it was just an interesting day watching how the photo shoot developed and how much standing around effectively there is when this sort of thing goes on so i thought we'd have a look at that it's not the first time that the railway has been featured in things we've had a, a photographers we had a video group down from the same magazine about probably a year or more ago now and they were down for a day doing a video on the club as a whole and for anybody that's seen the i think it's the great model railway challenge on channel five that's been going on the last few weeks all of the layouts that are shot there's a series of small inserts that go before and after the adverts uh, breaks all of those layouts on there were all shot down at our club room by uh, the group doing that term series so we've had a little bit of this sort of thing before but this was the first time i got up close and personal with uh, what was going on so let's go and have a look the end finished results now he came down about mid-afternoon i think it was on the thursday which was one of our regular club nights so that we could run through the afternoon and then some of the members that can't get there in the day could be there later on to help out as well and essentially it was just a matter of moving trains around and posing them for Andy to take the pictures what surprised me was that the cameras used are relatively small um, presumably high definition high megapixel type things but it's not so much the fact that it takes um, a picture every time it's you stop and they do stuff it takes about 20 and what they do they do what I believe is known as focus stacking um, take a photograph with the very front part of the engine in focus and then a little bit further back they take another one with the next bit in focus and they run down basically down the whole length of the whatever it is they're filming the train or a locomotive or a building filming every part of it in focus but with lots of photographs taken to get to that point and then there are hours spent after the uh, photo shoot post-production getting all this lot merged together to get all the sharp bits the same uh, on the same photograph and it produces some stunning results something you don't normally see with it, any sort of photograph that you might take on your own so really it was just all we were doing was standing around chatting while this sort of thing went on and photographs were taken that at the time didn't look anything like they did when they appeared in the magazine a lot of uh, other post-production stuff taking out the um, the people from the backgrounds and things like that just putting them all onto a clear blue background and it was something that was just instructive for us 
and we've now got some pretty good stills for publicity purposes that we can use that'll go together with other videos and things that we've had done of the layout. Similarly the lighting was partly our own lighting rig that we have on the layout but some of the other stuff was just done with small LED self-contained units which again have revolutionized the whole photography business really there's no longer any trailing wires and great big lamps that in the past I've done photographs and cine shoots where people have come away with basically like a sunburn from the uh, bulbs halogen bulbs and things nowadays it's all cold battery powered rechargeable LEDs essentially you just worked around the layout taking little cameos here and there the only real problem with this sort of thing is that the the level of detail of the photography shows up every minor defect in something that you've been working on for years that you thought was okay but in fact you see all sorts of things that are wrong another thing with the smaller cameras is that they can be put down pretty much at track level no no need for massive cameras that won't go into difficult spaces the filming went on for as I say about four hours something like that and that's enabled us to get the publicity done on time in in the railway magazines um, just in time for the exhibition at the weekend some of the photographs have got artificial smoke that's been added afterwards again post-production stuff what can be done is quite surprising by way of uh, trickery effectively once all that was completed things were cleared away and um, probably about a month or so later it was pretty much time then at that point to um, to pack the whole thing up and get it ready for the exhibition and that in itself is another story it's been out once or twice before last time we took it to the exhibition at the NEC about must be 10 years ago no 9 2014 five years ago probably we needed a seven and a half ton lorry at that point and um, then we hadn't got the internal boards on the corners where this brewery area is and the valley that's gone into the viaduct so the amount of room that's needed uh, it's now moved effectively to two transit vans that we take it in with tail lifts and the strip down again takes pretty much an evening to do um, take all the lighting rig off and then we get out effectively what are the same as the old bread trays the cart seized to move those around on we've made some timber ones very similar these things fold flat for most of the year whenever we want them we come and fold them up and then just take the layout apart in pieces and wherever we can these are stacked into the crates uh, some of the large areas like the corner scenery bits are just too big to do anything with other than just carry manhandle in one piece but all of the layout boards and there's I think 24 of them uh, just go on to the carts so they can be wheeled in and out of an exhibition venue loaded onto a tail lift and then taken away and brought back here's the finished article um, front cover for it we've got uh, 
the layout on and pretty much first layout you hit after the adverts is Kimball which is the arrow gauge layout and all of the photographs that were taken down there are in there a lot of the text and that was written by the group as a whole we just all cobbled together what we knew about it and the history of the layout and everything um, and there we are we've got about five or six pages nice layout plan done for us of, of what's there so that's it so a little bit of interest just to see uh, what goes on in a slightly different world to the the woodworking and making space that I'm normally in hope you enjoyed the video look forward to seeing you next week when we'll hopefully have something different see you then bye